Namaste world, I am Dutch. Welcome to the video series on interesting topics of modern Python programming and this is a second video on Python list. In the first video we have talked about what are Python list and how you can make use of them. In this video we are actually concentrating on one very important topic that is fetching data from the list also called slicing of Python list. This topic is slightly confusing and I have seen people you know going through this again and again but believe me by the end of this video if you go ahead with this Jupyter notebook there will not be any room for any confusion on slicing Python list. So let's go ahead and start. So before we go ahead let me tell you that Python list falls in the built-in type called sequence type other sequence types are prominent sequence types are tuple and range. List is very similar to arrays in different programming languages like C, C++ and Java. In this particular video we are going to just talk about slicing of Python list. Now before I proceed just a recommendation. If you haven't gone through my video on Python list I will highly recommend you to go through this video. You can see a card over here and this video will make complete sense because in that particular video I have talked about many things off list about which you might or might not be aware of. So let's go ahead and slice our list. So let's first create a list of some random elements. Now again a recap, Python list can be heterogeneous. So you can have data types of integer objects, floating point string within a list and that's what we have. Let us create this list. Now first let's either print or get all items of this particular list and there are multiple ways to do so. First and foremost loop through the list. So for list item in list I am printing list item and I loop through all individual items of the list and I have my list over here. If we just reference the list by default it gives us the elements in that particular list. Okay. We can just use the list and we will get everything. Now I know you know this, but the interesting things starts just now. You can use index range where you can give colon separated start index and end index. Not only that, if you give start index and end index, you must remember that this is inclusive exclusive principle, which means that start index will be included end index will be excluded okay so let's uh, suppose that i want to print index number 0 1 2 3 i will give list 0 2 4 remember because of inclusive exclusive principle 0 index will be included index 4 will be excluded okay so if i go ahead and execute this you can see that 0 1 2 3 index is printed 0 1 2 3 not 4 this is very important guys you know you should not forget this always remember the principle is inclusive exclusive which means 0th index the start index is inclusive end index is exclusive okay and if we want to print complete list we can say list 0 to len of list which will print all the elements of the list right here len of list will give 9 right let's see that len of list give 9 but you know array index or list index starts from 0 so this should be array out of bounds error kind of thing it doesn't happen only and only because of inclusive exclusive principle which means that len list returns 9 and 9th index is excluded that's the reason we didn't get any index array out of bounds exception. Okay. I hope this is clear. Now this is okay. But if your list is big, it is not prudent to, you know, call the len function each and every time. What we can do is that we can just print list colon. It will print all the elements. I know by just using list, you will also get all the elements. But remember to use this syntax. Reason being if you use this syntax, it will help you in understanding the range part of list. 
okay so now the question comes that you know first element of the index is zero what about last element we can say you know len minus one will be last element but there is a shortcut if you say index minus one minus one will give you the last element i will tell you how you can use negative numbers in list and this is one thing where i found people getting confused it is very very simple and let me explain it to you every time you give a negative number inside the list array it subtracts this number from the overall length of the list again it subtract this number from the overall length of the list which means that length of the list is 9 and if we use list minus 1 it becomes list minus 1 plus 9 9 minus 1 which becomes 8 and list 8 gives us the last element very simple okay another example let's say list minus 3 it gives us world okay how it gives us world list minus 3 plus 9 which gives list 6 and list 6 each world it is very simple friends every time you use a negative index number inside a list it pretty much means that you know it is gonna use that negative integer to subtract from the length of the list okay now the question comes uh, what if we go beyond minus 9 so if we just keep minus 9 it becomes 0 so it gives us the first element what if we give list minus 10 interesting what do you think no it doesn't circulates again it will give you an error okay it's a list index out of range which is obvious okay and this is good good that this happens otherwise it leads to different kinds of problem okay now there are other things with list so sometimes we slice list with steps how will we do that so by default when you use colon notation the step is one which means that in here i want all the elements from zero to nine in step of one which means i need all the elements I can go in a step of two, which means I need every second element. So I'll get one, then A, B, C, D, then 23, then world, then universe. In here, I can say that, you know what? I need to skip two elements and I need every third element. No problem. Here you will get every third element. First element, then first, second, third is two, then first, second, third is world, then there is no third element and the list stops. Make sense guys till now? So don't worry about this Jupyter Notebook. I will upload this Jupyter Notebook in my GitHub page. So just concentrate on what I'm trying to do over here. Then you can download this Jupyter Notebook and practice it yourself. Okay, now let's talk about some of the interesting shortcuts. So if we want to uh, print the list starting from index two to nine, remember this is inclusive, this is exclusive. Always remember inclusive, exclusive principle. So it will print from index 2 to 8. I can do that. Okay. Now I know 9 is the end index or beyond end index. And if I want to just print beyond a particular index, I can just say list 2 double colon, which means that from index 2, starting from index 2, print all the elements or get me all the elements till the end of the list. The benefit in this case, you do not need to remember or try to find out what is the end element of the list length of the end element similarly list single colon and list double colon does the same thing it will print or get you all the elements now there is something interesting and i am deliberately trying to mislead over here you must be thinking that if i am starting from two and giving double colon it will print everything right similarly if i give double colon before three it should print everything before three right no it treat it as a step which means that it will print zero then it will go to third then uh, it will go to third which is two then it will go to world which is two right so this is a step a skip step so don't confuse when you are using this you know double colon left hand side or right hand side okay and i have seen people getting confused over here quite a lot now, one very important thing, if you are used to NumPy, this is something different in list. The behavior in list is different than NumPy. Okay, I will talk about NumPy 
at the end of this video okay now uh, there is a question which states that what if i want to slice list with everything for from four index upwards so again very simple i will say four colon colon from four everything okay now i want to have everything but one less than the end we will say zero colon minus one now again whenever we are using any negative number the length of the list is subtracted from that which means that universe will not be printed okay if i say minus two four will not be printed similarly i have given this over here if i say minus three over here hello world will not be printed okay now let's go to something very interesting in two dimension list and you might have seen that uh, though lists are capable of holding two dimension uh, elements but still it is not used when we talk about mathematics machine learning data science there is a region and you will gonna know that region now so i've created a 2d list okay this is a uh, three by three list okay and this is how it looks like now let's talk about slicing this n dimension list i have created two dimension list we can create 3d list okay so whatever we have learned from 1d list is true for 2d list as well as for n dimension list okay but the only thing is that when you are giving dimension you are giving dimension like this this is first dimension this is second dimension oops this is second dimension and whatever we have learned for first dimension is applicable over here for example in this particular list what we want is that which second and third column of the first row so we will get first row and second and third column again inclusive exclusive principle so inclusive we get five six which is second and third column of the first row okay so that's how we can do it now nobody use multi-dimension lists and i will recommend you not to use that reason being if there is any requirement for you to use multi-dimension list i will highly recommend you to go ahead and use numpy arrays here is how numpy arrays will look like i am creating the same array same three by three numpy array and in here i can use comma separated different dimension notation remember i cannot use over here like this you know one uh, let me remove it one comma like this it will give me an error but in numpy arrays we can use that the only limitation you have to be aware about using numpy is that numpy is homogeneous okay you can have only one data type in a particular numpy array floating point integer or string you cannot have combination of them in a particular numpy array and that's the precise reason why numpy array takes less amount of memory and why it is used in mathematics or data science and machine learning okay so that's all about python lists okay i hope i was able to explain slicing of python list in the easiest possible way thanks a lot people thanks for watching till the next time we meet good day goodbye you take care